Once again, in this Gospel according to St. Matthew, we see a throng of people following Jesus out in the middle of the desert. And they are so hungry for what he has to say that they have not eaten anything in three days. And Jesus Christ says he does not want to dismiss the crowds lest they faint with hunger upon the road. And so once again, he commands his disciples to feed the people. And again, the disciples say, with what? Where will we get food in the middle of the desert? Jesus Christ asked them, well, what do you have? They said, seven loaves of bread and a few fish. Jesus Christ commanded the crowds to sit down. He blessed and commanded the disciples again to feed the people. And everyone once again ate and did not just eat, but were filled to satisfaction, after which again they filled up seven baskets of the leftovers. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, the number seven in this case is the number of perfection, the number of completion. After the six days of creation, the Lord rested on the seventh. Seven is the day of perfection. And so this shows us that Christ is the true food, the perfect food for us. After all, when he was preaching, when he was talking, when he was healing the sick, the lame and the blind, no one was thinking about, what shall I put in my stomach? No one was concerned about, oh, I wonder if I should go back into town and get something to eat, because they were consumed with reverence and zeal for God. And so we see that our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ knows what we need and takes care of us. He knew that these people were so faithful that they would go home and pass out on the way. And so he wanted them to be fed. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, as I said last Sunday, where did this bread come from? It came from the disciples themselves. Who multiplied it? Our Lord. And then who gave it to the people the disciples. In other words, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, it is our duty to bring to God that which will feed the people. And He will bless it. He will multiply it and give it back to us so that we may give to the people. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, not only will the Lord bless it, but He will give it in abundance more than the people need, so that there will be left over still. This is the majesty and the grace of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And let us not be like the people of Galilee. For shortly thereafter, people began to follow Jesus, not because of his miracles, not because of his words, but because of these two miracles of the feeding. And they said, well, I guess I don't need to work, I'll just follow Jesus and he'll give me food. But Jesus Christ is not talking to us or offering us merely physical food. He is showing us what real food is, communion with him. Communion is with him is what satiates our souls and our bodies. And so my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, let us bring people to Christ that he may feed them with his being, for he is the bread of life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is amazing to me how the Lord balances things. For on the one hand, we have the sad occasion of a year memorial for our brother and friend, Vladimir, who was taken care of so dutifully by the handmaiden of God, Helen. And on the other hand, we have a happy occasion in which we welcome into the church a small child, a blessing 
unto her parents and a blessing unto God. This shows us that our Lord has balance in all things, that when we are sad, God will bring us happiness. And when we are happy, God will balance it and temper it so that our joy may be mature and full. I pray that you all have a blessed and wonderful week. We're so glad that you were able to worship with us this Saturday. And we pray that you will continue to worship with us in the future. For the dismissal, we ask that you come up the center aisle, maintaining social distance, where I will give you a blessing, after which we ask that you exit down the side aisles and exit out the church through the center doors. If you wish to talk and commune, please, by all means, but do so outside, maintaining social distance so that we can all be safe.